Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel and part two of uh, what I'm now naming is Krusty the Land Rover. Now uh, I've jumped ahead a little bit on this because it's a customer's car and I needed to get a get it done, they need it back this week. So what I've done is obviously jacked it up, taken the wheels off, pulled out the fuel tank uh, and unclipped the wiring loom. The reason for taking the fuel tank out and not showing you is that it depends what Land Rover you're doing because they're all different. I mean if you're doing a turbo diesel is completely different to doing this so when you're doing this job you've got to take the fuel tank out no matter what so whatever vehicle it is so there's no point in me showing you in depth in how to take that fuel tank out because like I said they're all different but yeah so I've got a, a good head start on this we're pretty much up to the point where we need to be cutting and uh, I'm going to show you how to put the this rear cross member on almost the point how I put the rear cross member on there isn't an exact way of doing it this is my way of doing it it's never let me down yet so uh, yeah let's get this unwrapped and let's have a look at this new cross member first now this is a quality cross member it's uh, trying not to cut me on there it's uh, from Inside Out. I think it's Inside Out. I'll go and check on that. I'm pretty sure the company's called Inside Out. But I've fitted these before. Uh, there's one of these on barrel. And they are a really nice cross member. And I can tell you everything fits. This is the one I should have put on barrel, really. Well, not a TD5 one, that'd be silly, but the uh, I should have put the one with the long extensions when I did barrel. But I didn't. I put the one with the short extensions, so it's sort of only that long. Not that the barrel was actually rusty there, but uh, I should have put, put the one with the longer extensions. new body support or new body uh, bracket body mount body attachment piece it's the bit that goes across the back Tell you what, it ain't half heavy. It's a big lump of metal with us. Oh, there we go. I've got, got it's it's inside out four by four. I knew it'd be written on it somewhere. Now we've got this unwrapped, people always ask me, how do you measure for cutting? Now you've got, what's that, about 100 mil? About four inches? Yeah, 100 mil exactly. You've got 100 mil to play with. So that's, that's the socket where your existing chassis goes into. And so you've got 100 mil to play with. So what I do is, I take two fixed points. I take a top and a bottom so this fixed point here so that's uh, roughly 70 mil from that point to that point is 70 mil then I'll add 20 on so because you want a little bit of wiggle room when you you want to cut a little bit more off the chassis than you uh, 
would think you'd need to so that the fits somewhere in here because it gets a bit tight where they crimp them here because this obviously is opened out it is a socket to go over the uh, chassis so what does I say 70 70 to the edge of the bend plus 20 makes 90 mil so my me, me top measurement so if I've got if I've got me got my chassis coming down here so my top measurement will be uh, 90 mil from that fixed point where that uh, body brace comes in. So that's 90 mil, and you've got the anti-roll bar brackets, and they're fixed. They're a fixed point. They're going to be in the, in the same place. So from the edge of that's 40 mil plus 20 is going to be 60. So I'm going to go from the body from the anti-roll bar, bar mounts. If I could speak today, from the anti-roll bar mounts, I'm going to go 60 mil. So that's going to be me cut. Let's have a look on the chassis, what that's going to actually look like. So here's, here's the piece of chassis we're going to be cutting somewhere here, roughly. So we're going to go, what did I say, 90 mil? So on that other one, that's our bend, that's the weld there. So uh, 90 mil is going to be that. So that's 90. And we said 60 for the bottom. So that's going to be 60. Get through the rust and the crud. Now that looks a little bit steep, but we'll see when we cut it. Let's just check that again. Probably need that closer to the top, which is going to be there. Because it's a curve, it doesn't matter where you measure it. Bottom's right. So that's going to be the cut. So, like I said, but we've still got another, you know, sort of 75 mil to play with. So if that is too short, and that one, see that's come across a little bit, so it's a little bit more. But that's fine. We'll cut down there. We'll take those measurements over to the other side as well. If that's still a bit long, we can always take a bit more off. We're going to have to test fit it a couple of times to make sure it fits. I mean, if you want to make if you want to make your cut a bit further this way, you can because you've got all that extra metal to play with. I try not to take this is all this is all pretty good. So I'm trying not to take off any good metal if I can help it. Yeah, that bottom one should have been there. Like I say, it doesn't really matter that much. It's only a ballpark measurement. Yeah, that's better. So there you go. That's the first cut. I couldn't find a straight edge, so I'm actually using a... That's actually a mounting bracket for an awning. It was the closest thing I could find to a straight edge. But it's good enough for our purposes. Bang. So I'll put the, do the measurements on the other side. I can't get in underneath with the camera, guys. There's no room. For, there's barely room for me, never mind the camera. So I'll do the measurements. I'll do the same measurements on the other side. And this is pretty much ready for cutting off. The wiring loom is still in, in the chassis up here. So we've got to be really careful when we're cutting this side. Once this is cut, there's one bolt, two bolts holding it on at the back. So um, the other side I can cleave straight through, that's no problem, there's nothing in the way there. The, uh, someone's even welded the uh, tie down eye on there when they've done a patch here. That's why we're having to go up here. But there you go, right, keep measuring. All right, just give you a quick look at this uh, cross member and why we're changing it. So, uh, it's had more patches put in it than enough. Sorry about the flickery light, that's my head torch. I just turn my head torch off. There we go. Right, 
another patch caved in it's all bent in there and that's the good bit let's have a look underneath torch back on for you there you go but yeah it's absolutely rotten yep now you can see why we're changing it now along the back of the truck you've got all the body bolts that hold the back of the tub on. These two, which are under the spare wheel, I cannot move. These are solid. Uh, I've already snapped one Torx bit and I bent another one trying to get them out and they were big Torx bits. And uh, I'm just going to cut them off now. No, they're costing me money. So the rest of them, let me just move the camera for you, all just came out. I'm going to replace these with nuts and bolts anyway. I'm getting rid of the Torx bits. They're a stupid idea. Torx bits, bits at the best of time aren't brilliant and on a Land Rover they certainly aren't. So I've just got those other two, you know, those two that way to cut out. So right, I'm going to start cutting the chassis. So first cut, I'm going to do the passenger side. All measured out the same as the other. So cut down there, cut across the top. Literally, like I said before, there's no wiring loom in this side, so I can cut this one and uh, then make a cut, you know, very gently on the other side to make sure I don't chop the wiring loom. So it's just a case of cutting in a little bit at a time. Cutting the top's fine, it's just where the long wiring loom sits at the bottom because until you've cut it and pulled the uh, chassis away, you can't actually push the wiring loom up the chassis. So, uh, right, grinder time. That's three quarters of the way cut through now. So I've just got to get that edge and just across the top, this side's off. 
Now, like I said before, still got the wiring loom in here, so going to be really careful. It's up there somewhere. actually see because I've cut the back side of this already while well, I was under there I cut the other side and actually see where the wiring loom is so I can cut this bit without uh, worrying too much. Right, I'll get back underneath uh, and cut the back side of this. Really, what, I'm, what I want is a reciprocating saw just to do the top, and I don't think I've got one. I'll go and have a look if I've got a reciprocating saw. Just going to snip these bolts off. Uh, I think this is going to fire this straight towards my camera. Well. We have movement. Let's give this a bit of a wobble. Don't know what that was. I think it's still stuck in a few places. I mustn't have cut all the way through yet. 
but there must be there'll be bits inside the chassis still holding it I'll work on this for a few minutes till I get it loose it is loose now it is moving so like I say it's just going to be bits inside the chassis right, I might have got a bit more movement on this oh, yeah definitely oh this side this side's dropped completely now so it's just holding on on the other side It was a piece of metal inside the chassis that was causing the problem. Right, I'm just going to cut through the piece on the other side. So that's away completely now. Now I've just gone back to the other. Oh yeah, <laughs> there you go. There's not a lot holding that now. It's off. There you go. Just got to pull the wiring loom through, and that's away. Wow. I'll tell you what was stopping it coming off. It was hooked on those two bolts I ground off. Sorry, the picture's a bit dark there. But, uh, yeah, you see how rotten this is. Yeah, well rotten. Right, let's tidy all this up. It's the next day. The, um, I've had to think about this overnight. And uh, the wiring loom where it comes through the chassis, I was going to pull it down and then pull it back through. I think I'm just going to pull it out completely. It's what I've done on a number of these is taking the wiring loom out and then run it across the top of the chassis. For the simple reason, this piece here, can you see that? Yeah, there's a piece here that's been patched. And sooner or later this piece is going to need repatching because I didn't do this, someone else has done it. Um, and it's not brilliant. Well, the wiring loom runs right there, and if you can't get to it and you can't move it, you're stuffed, aren't you? You're going to burn the wiring loom. So, for future proofing it, and the fact that the driver's side outrigger is going to need doing sooner or later, I'm going to take the wiring loom out, run it across the top of the chassis, and uh, you know, basically save a lot of trouble in the future. And plus, if anything happens to the wiring loom, it's easily accessible, you can repair it. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to pull that out before I do anything, then I'm going to grind this up. Uh, I'm not going to film grinding it, um, it's just grinding. But I'll show you when it's all cleaned up and ready for having this piece attached. Once I can find where my G-clamps are to put it on with. Right, I've moved the wiring loom. Uh, it's up here now. It runs along the top of the chassis, along with the fuel lines. And uh, up and out the way. So let me get out from here. So you should just be able to make that out from the fly train. Runs along the top of the fuel lines, cable tied in there, comes over and behind the fuel rear fuel filter, and just comes out here at the moment, all the way around there into a big heap on the floor. Now Like I was saying before, I'm just going to do some grinding, but I thought I'd get that out of the way while I was doing the grinding. I didn't want to nip the uh, cables. There you go. I think also what I'll do is, right here, is bolt this panel on. This piece, get that bolted on as well at the same time, so that's up out of my way. That literally just bolts on behind there. Clang. So yeah, we're getting there. Just a lot of grinding. If you want to see what the inside of your chassis looks like when you've cut through it. Looks like that. Inside the chassis actually isn't too bad. There isn't a lot of rust in there. Right, like I said before, grinding. Well that was a filthy horrible job. There was a lot of rust on them, but they've cleaned it pretty good. The tops, uh, I've got all the rust off, I just can't get the grinder all the way, my grinder's too big to get in there so I've done them with the die grinder and die grind the tops off. The bottoms are as clean as the uh, sides, so let's have a look around here. And 
this one's just as good. Same again, die grind the top, the bottom is as clean like I said. There you go, nice clean metal on the underside for welding to. Uh, that is the most important thing when you're doing this, is to get the metal clean. You need a clean surface to weld to, you can't uh, leave any, well, shit on there basically. There's, uh, you've got to get it clean, otherwise the, the MIG won't uh, weld. You can do it with a stick, you could stick weld it, and it's plenty thick enough to stick weld. Well, we've reached a turning point in this job. Imagine bolting bits back on. I've just put this, um, I still don't know what you call it, body mount rail. There you go, because it mounts the body to the cross member. Um, like I said, I've just put this on, so we have reached a turning point. I've put this on first, because that will give me the point where, even though you can't push this up too far, because it'll actually sit on the body mounts, uh, it'll give me somewhere that I can put a block and a jack and actually jack it in place. So uh, I'm going to try to lift it on on my own. Uh, if I can't do that, I'll have to wait for my lad to come back. He's, he's not far. Off. And while I'm looking at that, that's not a watch. The, um, he's not far away now. He'll be back from work soon. So uh, I need to offer it up once, measure these tabs to see if they need cutting off. Mm, these ones here. And um, once they're cut, I can weld this on. I've just got to grind the galvy off this before I weld it. And that's it, it's on. And then we've pretty much cracked this job. It's, it's on the home stretch. Once this is welded on, that's it. Fuel tank back in, wiring loom, plug it all up. Done, put some fuel back in the tank. So, uh, not a bad job to do, but it's just horrible. When they're this rusty, it's horrible to do because you're just filthy all the time. So uh, yeah, I'm going to see if I can offer this up on my own, and if I can't, um, me and Lloyd will be offering it up in a minute. Okay, the struggle is real. That was uh, not easy to get on on my own. Now, it's not quite right. It needs to go up a little bit more. So these brackets are just a bit tall. I need to just shave like, I think it's like 10 mil off the top of them. Um, it's it's pressed up tight against this one. Whether this has got a little bit of a, this has been hit in this corner at one time, so that probably isn't helping. But uh, I'll just take the tops off these brackets, so I'll take them out, and uh, and or uh, I could actually just uh, drill the holes out a bit bigger, one or the other. It's got to come off anyway. But uh, yeah, looks better now. Looks a lot better. The, uh, let me just show you on the inside where it's uh, not quite fitting right. I've got like a 15mm gap, these should be touching. Um, probably could do with jacking it up from, uh, sorry you can't see that, jacking it up from here and pushing it up square, which I might do. In fact I might do that first because looking at this it's sitting low here. So it needs, because it's got all the weight on the back, it's pushing these down. That might be the issue actually. So uh, I'll jack it from the centre and get it clamped up. And then once I've done that, I've got to take it off again because I didn't bother grinding the edges. The plates don't actually need trimming, which is a bugger. <laughs> it's not damaged. But yeah. I can uh, live with that now on the home stretch. Wow, it's been a job. What's well, in? Well it isn't in, it's got to come back out because I haven't done the grinding on it yet. But uh, yeah, jacking it up from the centre, lined it all up, it's flush on the body now, it's sitting on the mount, it's actually picking the vehicle up so it's uh, got a lot of weight on it now. But that looks pretty good. The bolt holes all line up and now I've got to take the bugger back out to because I didn't bother grinding the uh, galve off the bits when we were welding and you can't weld it into galve it's not pleasant so uh, right I need to take it all back off at least I know it fits wow I think I've earned this brew I am absolutely knackered It's the fact doing it on the floor, it's an absolute killer. 
there's um, if you're doing it on a lift much easier but right so I've tightened up these bolts I'm just going to bolt the rail on and we're ready for welding and once it's welded this job's done that's it but yeah it's uh, not come out too bad I've measured a couple of fixed points on the chassis mainly the the inner rail that runs across the original chassis to the back of this and it measures out within a couple of mil yeah it's probably an accuracy on the tape measure more than anything but the it looks fairly square on the body uh, I don't always trust going off the body because this has been hit in this corner and this body's not quite the same as that side because I've measured them and it's not quite the same so you can actually see that these lights are pushed in a bit so don't measure off the body find a fixed point from inside the chassis to the back of the rail like I say it measures out within a couple of mil it's probably more accurate more accurate than it was when it came out the factory if you if you ever measured one um, they're never square not completely they have tolerances and I think it's plus or minus about that <laughs> no but uh, it's gone together quite well really I say ready for welding now I'll stop prattling I'll drink my brew and get some welding done well we've reached that point guys we're gonna weld it so uh, what I'm gonna do is just put a tack weld here and then do the same on the other side I can only find this one clamp I know where my others are my brothers borrowed them never bought them back so uh, what I'm gonna have to do like I say tack this this top edge needs trimming to match the angle that'll be fine that'll knock down and weld but this top edge is just too high so uh, just cut that with the grinder and uh, other than that fits really well just run a tap through these holes the other side fits exactly the same so uh, I did the same again just get the grinder nip that off till it follows the profile of the chassis just got a bit of uh, aluminium up here just to protect the fuel pipes while we're welding just keep the heat and the what's it off the plastic pipes but like I said there's nothing else for it now but to get the weld out Just hold that. In fact, what I'll do is go around the other side and weld that too.
forgotten to do, close up these seams. I've done the inside, well, uh, I can't get a camera in there, but I've done them. Hey, we're nearly there. Oh man, would you believe it? I've got like two pieces left to weld. Run out of bloody welding wire, I've had to go out and fetch some. And it's rush hour, so it's taken me ages. Oh, you have to set the centre. Do you have to set the centre knot out of this one? Is it threaded? I can't remember. It's been a while since I've done it. That'll be fine. Okay, right, I'm going to put this wire in and uh, we'll carry on with this welding. In fact, it's quite late now. I think I'm going to finish it tomorrow. Yeah, I'll put the wire in finish this up in the morning, eh? I finished the welding last night. I didn't film it. I got the welder working, had to test it. So I've only got three welds left to do, so I finished the welding. So literally, that's done. It's on. All I've got to do is put it back together. So uh, let me show you what I've just got to do to finish up. It isn't a lot. I've just got to take the grinder, knock the tops off the welds, just tidy them up a bit, and uh, spray some under seal on. So uh, yeah, let's have a look. There you go, all welded up. Looks a bit better under there now. So just a case of, uh, like I say, I'm just going to touch the grinder over these. More on the other side where the fuel pipes run, because they rub on that top edge. Well, they don't rub, but they sit there, if you know what I mean. So uh, it's a little bit darker this side. I just run knock this span. That's not too bad. I just flick these tops off. And then just spray some under seal on. Take me five minutes. Definitely looks hell of a lot better.
have you guys. Done. All sorted. One new rear cross member and that's how I fit them. Now uh, this is where you came into this video uh, with me cutting the cross member off so I'm going to finish it here. So if you've enjoyed this video give me that thumbs up, make sure to subscribe and I will see you on the next one. <laughs>